Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your Wednesday's Talking Town, the match day preview show. We're going to look ahead to Cheltenham, the return to League One action. Uh, the last time we were in League One action, of course, was a 4 4 away at Cheltenham. So, uh, plenty to, to work through and come out the other side in, in what potentially should be three points at home. I'll let you decide. I'll let you uh, let me know at home. As always, you can get involved via the use of the live chat, as many of you have uh, have done so already this evening. We've got AD Croucher, who had a great away day at Bracknell, even had many texts that he's been seen on TV multiple times. Uh, more importantly, Tanner for his second round up the town. Good evening, Mr. Brown. See you Saturday. Anthony Steele is here. Um, love to see. We've got Mike D as well. Stephen Fuchs, good evening all. Uh, Stephen, I know you're probably going to ask about the Prediction League. Not uh, available just yet, so check back on Friday's show uh, where the link will be available then. So get active in the live chat. Um, and if supporting local football team is, or teams is your thing or watching local football action, uh, the Trimley highlight package I put together is now live on their channel link in the description, uh, in the chat rather. Two red cards uh, and three goals for you to enjoy there in about, you know, I don't know what, seven minutes of action. Not long uh, and some good stuff there to enjoy. Also, this weekend is, of course, Cheltenham at home. Uh, and our friends at AwayDayBeers.com have a an Away Day Beers beer company pre-game Marcus Stewart fundraiser. It is at the Baths venue in Civic Drive from 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, you can go to AwayDayBeers.com. This is not the first time or last time. I will be mentioning it uh, through the course of this show and, of course, Friday show as we officially kick off the weekend. Uh, but the three beers, owls on tap will be the Bundeslager, which is a very nice owl uh, or lager. I will tell you that. The Marcus Brewer never had. I'm sure it's going to be good. And the uh, uh, I, uh, why do you give me? Sh- you know I can't even say Alan she- Alan Shearer, let alone that one. Uh, the IP one eighty, um, eighteen. Suck on her daydream. Anyway, right, that's my singing done for the night. Let's go ahead and bring in a, a friend of mine, somebody you know and love. He hasn't got an intro yet because I'm just getting lazy in my old age. But it's of course Mr. Brandon Carter. Good evening, Mr. Carter. How are you? Not bad. How are you? I am very you? well, thank you. Out of those three wonderful beers, the IP1 ta- uh, IP1 uh, A team, the Marcus Brewer or the Bundeslager, which one could I get you a pint of if if I was buying it? And I'm not because I'm, I'm not. I'm not really a beer drinker. Um, Gotta be a beer drinker, Brandon. Gotta put airs on that chest, son. If I was drunk enough, I'd go by name alone, and I like the sound of a Marcus Brewer. It's a good name, isn't it? Yeah, I'd yeah, go for that name. one. Don't know who came up with it. Don't know who came up with it at all, but it's a great name. Absolutely. You know, but uh, they always, you know, you've got to be an owl drinker, Brandon. you got to, you got to, you know. I'm sure I'll go into it. Yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, talking of growing into it, obviously we've got a game this weekend, which we're going to be building up to. Uh, we also have a ticket. They are quality hours, says Stephen Parry. And Stephen Parry, as a as a fine northernman, uh, I northern can imagine. would, would I can know imagine his owl. From oh, his yeah. non-owls. Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. Matt Snyder says, opposite the Wolsey Theatre, near the Civic Drive roundabout. I will try and pop in if I can. Uh, obviously, Saturday is always a bit of a rush, family. But they're going away, to be fair. So they might be going early. That sounds like you're having a drink on the weekend, mine. Mm. Mm, this is interesting. Like. Mm. Just, o- just, just over a chest infection, just in time, Brandon. Mm. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Interesting, Simon. yes. Oh, Simon. it's got to be. Uh, but as I was I, where I was going originally was with the uh, we have a ticket giveaway. I say we Richard Cruncher Moss has a ticket giveaway uh, for the weekend. And uh, we have 35 names in the draw this week. Brandon, they are, look, I say names. I've got numbers. I don't get told names. I just get told Gov. We've got I pick number nine people. Uh, you can't pick nothing. But oh. what I will do is I will shuffle it up. Right, so there you go. They've all been shuffled. If it's um, number nine. Is, I'm, tell you what, this is I'm as close as you're going to get to white gloves, Camelot. You know, press that button, really. Um, but when you're ready, Brandon, say say like the national lottery. Say a I've few got, words I've of encouragement I've got to those it. at home, and then I'll press the I'll press the the, the spin button. Are you ready? Go. 
Good luck, everyone, in the draw. Spin that wheel, Martin. There we go. Those, there those go. are fine words from Brandon Carter. You can see him and Grace from Talking Number nine, Cricket. I'm doing a roulette. In town. Uh, the winner is number oh, 30. Oh. There you go. Not a board draw. It's number 30. That's not number 30 in bingo, but I just thought I'd make it up. Um, but yeah, number 30. Rich will be in contact with you. Congratulations. You have won tickets to Cheltenham. Condolences Cheltenham. to number seven there. It looked like it was very close. It did, but you Poor know. Guy. We close. never know who number seven is, so. We don't, well, I, I, I don't get involved in the names. I just get involved in the numbers. Um, but yeah, there you go. Ticket giveaway done and dusted. Uh, I'm going to ask you your, for your favourite goal live in a moment, Brandon. Before I do, let's complete our team for this evening. Uh, if you're growing into the role like Andy Drury in the championship, um, go with me on that one. Uh, this man here is going to play alongside you in the centre of midfield. Alan um, Quinn. Who played of Andy Drury? Weren't Alan field. Quinn era, was it? it was Alan Quinn, receding, that's a great receding, shout. Receding hairline midfielders. He may Front not have better. He Get may... him in yes. there as well. Yeah, lead boots. But let's go with Alan Quinn. It is, of course, Wizards. Alan Quinn, Neil Wilmore. Neil, how are you, sir? Evening. How is everyone? Do you mind the Alan Quinn as, as association then? I wasn't a midfielder. I was a centre forward. Ooh. So we got... Ooh, I like that. So what, what sort of centre forward are you, Neil? Ooh, in my younger days, I was very quick. But I'm not young now. But uh, yeah, no. I, I look for the through ball. That's what I used to play on, playing the Very defender's nice. shoulder. How would you cope with the defender like Rich? You're a cruncher. You would like to put a, put an hard tackle on, in on you. What, what, um, what would your words be to out the strikers out there who have to face that on a weekly basis? Him. Rinse him. I'd rinse him. He wouldn't get close to you, he would he? wouldn't get close to me. No, no, he wouldn't be close enough to go through Little him. ball <laughs> over the shoulder and I'd rinse him. Love that. Love I reckon that Rich. I reckon Rich was the equivalent of Per Mertesacker. I reckon. <laughs> oh, he had, that's. I reckon oh. He had the pace of a sloth. Mark only, Fish. only you could say that as his understudy on talking cricket. But uh, what yeah. sort of player are you, Brandon? If 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 Neil's a striker there, a whip it. What sort of what sort of player are you? Oh, well, I was sort of a jack of all trades. To be fair, um, I played every position between uh, the age of sixteen and eighteen. Um, I sort of ended up going to the back. Because I like the header. Who doesn't like a header? Love a header. Um, so sort of started. I played a lot in centre mid, and then I went to centre back, and um, and then I, I was even a goalkeeper at one point. Oh, that's brave. Yeah. 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 Well, they always said the words. Obviously, cricket and, goal. and goalkeeper, you get the mm. balls going at you one way or another. As the next goalkeeper, Brandon, I'm here to tell you they always sit the worst players in goal, mate. Don't worry about it. Um, Andy Barrels joining us at the weekend. Big up, bad Andy. Looking forward to meeting you. See you by Sir Ralph. Uh, Kevin, Rich would be too worried about getting his white boots dirty. They're not white, though, are they? They're pink boots. Yeah, he, do he does strike me as a luminous guy, Rich. All the attention has to go on to him, doesn't it? Well, he's the referee in the middle. Uh, Stephen Crowd used comments. to smoke cigs and drink. I didn't know you play Sunday morning football, Stephen. Uh, was never a sporty, I'll be honest. Uh, I thought that like, goes hand in hand with Sunday league, Stephen. That's why I said Smoking it. Smoking on know? the sideline, yeah. I, I was the manager of a Sunday league team now, and I can remember many players turning up at half time, or even, even before the game, absolutely hurling their guts at the halfway line. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. Sunday league. Oh, yes. Yeah. Athletes. <laughs> Proper <laughs> athletes on a Sunday, aren't they? You know, oh, yes. this isotonic drinks, just oh, athletes. Bottle of Luke's aid or Red Bull before the game. Probably Red Bull because it would it still go with the with the with the uh, the, yeah, the oh, yeah the burping that you you were probably still. I bet uh, I, I bet having. Cristiano Ronaldo has never done it on a Sunday morning down oh, Low Road in Dover he Court, has he? He could. Oh no. God, yeah, Low Road in Dover Court's freezing down there. He knows. Neil knows. Oh, Neil knows. Sunday Neil league knows football it. down there is freezing. Yeah, hail yep. storms from the seafront. Yeah, right, oh yeah, going that way. Yeah. You know, not, oh, yeah. not like cold, cold, cold wind. It can be thirty degrees and sunny oh, and yeah. hot everywhere else, but it will be about ten degrees with a wind shield down Harry. Oh yeah, yeah. Grand oh, Tate would be a drinning type striker, didn't they? You on the bench there, Graham. Um, favorite live, favorite goal you've seen live, which sadly would rule out Aaron Drinham because I never saw a goal of his live uh, through the eye follow screen. Certainly, mm, but not live. Yeah. Um, they're rarer than a unicorn. Um, well, they were for town. They're not, they're not for Leighton Orient, I'll be honest. But what is your favourite goal to have seen live? Like to know yours in the chat. I'll start with you, uh, Brandon, because I brought you in first. You had a bit more time to think about it. Your yes. favourite goal live and why? Unfortunately, I've been a fan through the dark years, considering my age. You know, I, I, missed, the, I missed a lot of the good stuff. But my favourite goal I saw live 
was when Ipswich beat Crystal Palace 3-0 at home and Aaron Cresswell scored an absolute screamer. And if you remember just before that, I think Damien Delaney turned to the north stand and, and indicated that we were going down. Mm. And uh, Cresswell, with the outside of his left peg, has curled it into the top corner. And he's run across the north stand pretty much doing this, saying we're not going down like that. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, that celebration. It was, it was yeah. also, I think, um, Frank Newball scored 20 seconds after because he uh, tackled Spironi from a, a pass back to him. And then, as I said, we just absolutely rounce them 3-0. It was lovely. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and That Cresswell yeah. goal was, it was like, uh, I, I was sat, it was, uh, I had a half season ticket that year, which was like a fiver, because that was when under 16s went for like a fiver for a season, yeah. ticket, which is brilliant. Um, I was front row by the corner flag at the cobbled. So you could sort of see the fans done the normal fans thing, you know, as soon as a player touches a ball 20 odd yards out. Shoot. Shoot. And he did with the outside of his left peg. Endor got the assist. Of course what he else did. Do you want for a girl. Of course he what, did. What else do you want from a girl? There he is. It's just town Absolute folklore. Banger. Big bad Jerry and Endor. Uh, I remember that game actually. Yeah, Paul McShane probably still checks in his closet under his bed in his back garden Frank for Nubel's Frank Newball because Frank Newball terrorised him. What that a game night. that was for him. What a great game. Neil, your favourite goal live and why? I've got a few in the chats. I'll get to in a second. But what's your favourite goal and why? Blimey, I've got hundreds. Um... Oh, good. We like that. Bring one to the party. <laughs> oh, God, there's loads. Uh... The playoff season, you could pick what? several of them. You had Magilton, uh, Mowbray at Wembley, Stewart's goal, Bruce's goal. Uh, then there was Alan Armstrong against Inter Milan in the UEFA Cup. That was a great goal. That's that was a very good goal. Great ball in the box as great well from yeah. I don't know how, uh, I, I've, I've, Jamie I've only Beckham. seen that on video, but I don't know how he generated the power on that header. There was, it was no yeah, power was on the, the cross at all, was nah. it? I think it's a loop up from, was it Clapham yeah. Cross? Yeah, it? Jamie, a la Clapham Beckham. Yeah, and it was just all in the neck and he somehow managed to get it in. But I suppose if I, had, if I had to pick one, it's Magilton's equaliser in the last minute in the playoff semi. Oh, that is a great goal, to be fair. It was. That, is a, that is a good goal it to was. choose. There's many to choose from that era. Paul Anderson in the playoffs against Norwich. I know we lost to him in the second game, but that was a... That's I've not never even... heard a noise like it. No. That's not even Paul Anderson's best goal, though, Neil. His best goal is at Huddersfield away. Yeah, when he comes it in from, like, 30 Bendy. yards. I know. Yes. I'm talking about atmospheric that is a goal. goal and everything. You know, it's... Um... Yeah, that is... You're right. Priskin yeah, right. against yeah. Arsenal. There's yeah, no, one. he just put that in there. Priskin's offside goal against Arsenal. How about that <laughs> What, with one? Healy's deflected assist? <laughs> I still can't believe that out of all the players that Arsenal had at that point, to absolutely knock us out of the competition and some was Lord Bentner. Can't yeah, believe yes. it. Yes. I know. I can't I know. believe it. Yeah, I can't. It's the way it goes sometimes, though, isn't it? Football's cruel. It's a cruel, cruel game. Yeah. Uh, but if you've ever been to Huddersfield, either of you, you'll know the way fans are right behind one of the goals. So, Lee, uh, Paul Anderson, Lee Anderson, he wishes. Paul Anderson's goal at Huddersfield is such a good goal because you're right behind, you're right facing it uh, as it goes. As it just bends around that. I've just defender. remembered, I've just remembered three goals that I saw when I was younger. Go for I, it. I was there the day Daly and Atkinson got his hat trick against Middlesbrough. Ah, we've got Mike D there. Hat Atkinson versus Borough as a highlight. Three, yeah, they're three of the best goals you'll ever see. Uh, Tariko gets Pal uh, gets Palace 1997. Tariko yeah. gets Man United in 97. That is a great little goal. Over Raymond van der Gaal. There's a name for you. Raymond van der Gaal. Van der Gaal. And, uh, what I a remember great um, Leguinsky scored one goal at town. Wasn't that a, a bit of a screamer of a volley, if I remember rightly? No, he scored more than one because he scored against Norwich as well, which wasn't a volley. That was a well-worked goal where he worked himself into the box. And after that, it, the song oh, was uh, Legwinski. He scores against the... He'll score another one. Legwin... Whoa, what a player. Every, oh, every single Tom Lawrence goal for town is probably a contender in terms of quality. QPR away. I mean, yeah. That's a, you know, hell of a goal. Uh, we've, got, we've got Cucci against Palace. Away to win 4-3, says Craig. Uh, John Stead overhead kick at Reading. Love a good overhead kick, pretty from John Stead. Uh, Bat Stannard, Danny Hayes' goal, which was blatantly handball. Uh, Wickham running the length of the pitch to score. Uh, love these coming in. Do keep them coming in. against Coventry. To, uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. He Makes only Barrett's run the length of the look pitch. Uh, Rob Brilliant. Holmes, Alathorne, OG against Norwich. The fact, oh, they're just to look afterwards where he just, in, just shakes his head. <laughs> like he can't believe it's happened to him. Like, what's he done to me? What's he done? Great. Thing is, though, luckily for uh, Rob Ullathorne, Rob Ullathorne, is that it's Brian Gunn that gets the whole oh, yeah. 
yeah, he he's he, he's a footnote that's often overlooked, which he'll be probably pleased about, to be fair. Uh, but at the time, his face certainly didn't think he'd be overlooked. He thought he was, oh no, what have I done? Um, talking about what I've done or what somebody has done, um, wows, apparently they've got a world class squad because oh. they've uh, they've left Wesley Lionel Messi Burns at home for the, the squad, taking play such great, such powerhouses. Such as Johnny Williams, uh, Ruben Colwell, Chris Gunter, um, uh, ahead of him. Neil, what are your thoughts on no World Cup for Wes? On a selfish note, it's good because he stays yes. with us. But for him, it's a shame because there's players in there I would think he's better than. Whether he'd get a lot of game time out there, I don't know. They seem very a close knit group, the Welsh. You know, they've got their side and mm. like Joe Allen's in the squad, isn't he? I think. Uh, I yeah, believe so. He's injured. Yeah. Even though he's yeah. injured. Yeah. Morel, yeah, yeah. Will- Johnny Williams of League Two Swindon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yet Burns isn't in there. So it just seems a bit of a tight, um, a close shop. The world squad. I don't uh, think yeah. he was ever going to get in. Jobs I kept thinking mates, about it. And I thought, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop for the boys. I didn't think he'd get in. I kept thinking, will he get in? I thought, I don't think he will. And he didn't. So for us, it's great. We've got him yeah. all over Christmas now. It's fabulous. But for great him, for it's us. a shame. It's a shame him, for him. A shame for him, says Neil. Brandon, um, obviously, he appears to have gone with the whole squad chemistry. Uh, we're away for a while. We need to have the, the you know, the players that pick you up you know, when, when you're down, just to keep your feet on the ground. And every, and every squad needs those players. Every, 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 you know, every dynamic is important within the squad. Uh, but for, for Wesley, you know, compared to what he's played with this year, last year, etc. Great for us, says Neil. But, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a big blow, isn't it? I don't I don't get it, Martin. Um, looking at the all of the media that I read sort of leading up to the announcement, even, you know, Welsh reporters, things like that. Even they they were saying, you know, if he if he goes for a centre back, then. You know the balance of the the extra centre back, the balance of the squads off to replace mm. that Norrington Davis guy, and if not, they have to go for for Wesley Burns as a wing back. Because you look at their look at their squad, Chris Gunter, AFC Wimbledon, sixteen games this year. Chris Gunter up. Oh, so you're telling me Chris Gunter is going to play at right wing back for Wales, right? Mm-hmm. And he's going to be against, even though he's not brilliant, Christian Pulisic, Chelsea player. Yeah, it doesn't play much for Chelsea, I know. He sort of rotates a little bit like, like us, but mostly off the bench. He will have Chris Gunter on toast. Um, Raheem Sterling um, running at Chris Gunter. Um, I'm sure there's probably two Iranians who are probably going to have Chris Gunter on toast. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't get it. I, I don't get how two players who are playing in League Two, right, are in the squad. I don't understand how he's gone for. I think I read somewhere that about three of the players who arguably could have been left out, whether that be a centre back or a wing back option, have played something like a combined amount of like three starts between them all year, all year this year. Not idea, Considering we're we're about a third of what, well, we are a third of the way into the season. I don't get it because he also said he was asked about um, Rabi Matonda, who's at Rangers. Um, Robbie Matonda, and um, his reasoning for that was he's not been in great form and he's not creating chances. Well, why are you selecting players who I haven't seen Johnny Williams score a goal in League Two this year? I haven't seen half of these people who he's picked ahead of Wes Burns who are on the on the cusp don't play. So he's no. contradicting himself by who he's selected and what he's saying. But I'm happy we're going to have him. Um, I think we would have been able to survive without him because I think yep. that as we've touched on a lot this year he hasn't been at the heights he has been but a lot of that has been because of how good our left side is um but um yeah I, I'm gutted for him I'm happy for Ipswich that we're going to have him I'm sure that I know that he came out after Bracknell and I think he said all the right things that it's a win-win situation for him I think that there's going to be a couple of the lads who have to get around him a little bit because he probably will be a bit Miffed Deflated a little bit, yeah, because yeah, yeah. obviously he's what is he? Is he 27? So he's natural, so he's natural, yeah. 27, yeah. you know, not four he's years a... you're not, might not be 31, years, especially the sort of player he is with 
relying on his pace and his athleticism, he, he might not have that. Wow's might not, might not be there in, in four years' time. You know, they're not, well, they're, they're not the probably, that, they're assured they're their not, position at a World Cup. Yet, are they? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I genuinely thought, I, it's not just down to Wes Burns. I thought that Wales have half a chance of of getting out of the group, considering USA are really their main challenger. If, if Iran come through, then fair dues to them. But, um, you know, but Gareth Bale's played something like, what, 67 minutes or something I read somewhere. Yeah, but he is special, um, isn't he? he? He is special, but at the end of the yeah. day, you're not going to be able to get 90 minutes out of him. And if you're bringing him on for 10 minutes, you might be two goals or three goals down by then to make a difference. It is quite difficult. So good luck to them. Good luck to Kiefer Moore FC. And um, I'm sure they'll get uh, battered a couple of times. They might well, get a win against a round, though. You never yeah. Know. Yeah, I mean, you know, the last thing we wanted was seeing Wesley Burns against Ipswich scoring a, a last minute winner. Uh, Rob Holmes, disappointed for Wes, but glad he's playing for us and promotion push instead of warming a bench in Qatar. Uh, Wales will be out first week, says Gavin. Andy, um, oh, no, don't know what that's about. Colin, Johnny, Johnny Williams, what an effing joke. Yeah, to be fair, you know, Johnny, he's played, or Jonathan Williams, he's played 16 times for Swindon, six goals. He's not in the worst of form. It's, you know, it's just it's because he's there instead of Wes. Well, yeah. this is it. Yeah, this is it. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I hope he's got the tour of the shares in the home of Colford. Oh, don't know what that's about. Matt Stanard, you know, it's England versus Wales draw, England USA draw, England knocked out by a fluke 1 0 win to Iran. Uh, Gav doesn't care about Wales, but he cares about Ipswich Town. Absolutely, Gavin. I care about uh, you know, Wesley Burns, who plays Burns. for Ipswich Town. And, absolutely. Yeah, what a disappointment for him. But he will remain a town player. Uh, and what a way to, I don't know, proverbially stick a couple of fingers up by grabbing the, all Go the headlines through. Goals. November, Absolutely. while potentially Wales struggle. Who knows I what think, the storyline will be. What we've got to remember is there's another round of fixtures coming up this week and you can change the squad up until two days yeah. before it, before your first game or some shit like that. So Through to injury, um, isn't it? Yeah, so if anything happens over the weekend, I can only imagine that considering he was on the cusp, according to a lot of reports, I imagine that he'll be one of the first names that they could possibly bring up because... He is quite versatile, to be fair to him. He's shown it even for Wales when yeah. he when he started yeah. that game. I I was sort of following the game and I saw it. He was getting a lot of praise, saying that playing left wing back, which we haven't seen him do at Ipswich, no. that he was he was sort of like lightning in a bottle that we knew of him last year for us. So um, yeah, I'm gutted for him, but um, I'm sure that he can smash in some goals whilst Wales are, are losing at the World Cup and. Maybe point at the back of his shirt like uh, James Norwood showed him a couple of times whilst he was at town. Well, well, this is it. You know, he's had a plenty of practice on how to get headlines with with uh, fingers and ears. I know he wasn't here for that moment, but I'm sure he's got a video. You can watch it back. Um, or the Teddy Bishop. Was it the Teddy Bishop? Teddy Bishop did it. Yeah, yeah the finger. Um, in, uh, yeah. Chambers did it as well, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, they're, all, they're all manner they're of all doing players. it. Yeah, uh, they're, they're all doing it during COVID. Was it the start yeah. of that season, weren't it, when it was it COVID? It was. Against yeah. Wigan, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Neil, Brandon said that about, obviously, you know, they, you can change before the World Cup. If it was to change, because Wes can play left wing back, right wing back, right back, right midfield, right centre forward. If it was to change and Wes was to get drafted in, just to live in this world for 30, 60 seconds, could we cope without Wes if he was to get drafted in? I think so, yeah. What I've seen so far this season, we've got enough to cover, I think. I think so. With your likes of Edwards, etc., that have come in, I think... Yeah, Burns hasn't been as good as he has been last season, but whether that's people have got wise to him, people know how we play with him, I don't know. But, yeah, I think we could cope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Carl Edwards obviously could have potentially filled that gap. Uh, another, Vincent another couple Young of the other night. Vincent, Vincent Young, Young against Bretnall was yeah. outstanding. Yeah. Absolutely. As you wish, 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 wish players to be, you know, because of the, the golf in the competition. But yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Looking forward to seeing if either of you have him in your lineup for the weekend. Before we get to that point in the show, uh, Kieran McKenna has been nominated for a, a player of the month. Uh, in other news, Birds oh, he's Fly. done well. Player of the uh, month. Well, yeah, I mean, well. uh, manager of the month. Manager <laughs> of the month. But in fact, he's, he's so good, he could probably do it all anyway. Player, <laughs> scorer, keeper, anything he wants to do, I'm sure he could do. But manager of the month, he's up against, right? Here we go. Grant McCann at Peterborough, Darren Moore at Sheffield Wednesday, and Stephen Schumacher at Plymouth. Neil, does Kieran McGinnis take it? If so, why? And if not, who takes it and why? Uh, I don't know whether he will. I, I suspect the Plymouth guy will get it. Schumacher. Yeah. Might be the curse they need. Yeah. Need. Yeah. 
we don't really want um my dog's just come in the room uh we don't really want um want him winning that so that um you know it curses us and we start playing badly so i'd rather them win it rather than, we don't need he doesn't need awards to show he's a good manager we no, know he's a good manager but it's annoying. nice for him but i don't think he'd be that bothered i don't no. think he'd be that bothered Okay, so you think Stephen Schumacher? This is what the EFL website says about Stephen Schumacher uh, nomination. There is a symbiotic serenity about Schumacher's fit with his Argyle side. He has happy squad players, given all they're, they're all for each and eight for each other, and emerging with it with the result every time. As nineteen points in eighteen games, uh, eighteen goals, sorry, from seven unbeaten games prove. Um, I played. I, I spoke. I, I, I read that out a bit like we played at Plymouth. I started off well. And then fucking just... died midway through, and then up for, you know, for just for a little spell, just for a yeah. little spell that cost just for a little spell. I lost yeah. it, and that was just enough. Um, so apologies at home, but Brandon, same question to you: Does Kieran take it? If so, why? And if he doesn't, who does and why? Don't make it Schumacher because that's already gone. That's just well. Um, I don't it, it, want to. Of oh, course. Sorry. I, 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 I think this always goes down to the amount of points dropped from the ones available. Oh. And I believe Plymouth drew one game and won the rest of them. Um, Peter Brown lost one game, drew one game. Obviously, we lost one game, drew one game as well. Um, so I think it is it's going to be Schumacher. Um, they also got that big win on Sky against um, Exeter, which was a, a derby game. And I think a lot of that go um, a lot of sort of what's been seen from the greater audience probably goes into that and a derby day wins quite big so it'll probably be schumacher i don't i don't particularly care uh kieran mckenna I don't, I don't know whether he's even got a i don't think he has got a manager of the month yet since he's been at ipswich and since he's been at ipswich he's arguably been the best manager in league one over the course of that time so as long as he gets manager of the year at the end of the year and ipswich are in the championship i don't particularly care you're muted gov sorry having a cough but schumacher is your 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 choice. Yep. If they don't go of him, it's just because it, he got it last year and they fancy a change. It's not down to anything else, I don't think. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me just read you what they wrote about McKenna. McKenna's side were League One's entertainers in October. There are seven games, which brought them 16 points, so a total of 26 goals, including a thrilling 4-4 draw. It fucking wasn't thrilling. Not one bit. Not one bit of it was thrilling. Let me promise you that against Charlton. Oh. Um, and stirring 3-2 victories of a Portsmouth and Port Vale. A thrilling 4 4. I don't want to be that. thrilling. It wasn't thrilling for me. Not sat here. Draining. No, no, no. Demoralizing. It was, it was evil. Uh, Norman Plymouth are scoring a disproportionate number of goals from their chances. They create it cannot last. And Colin wants us to sing uh, a Peterborough fans, you are Tim Pot and you know you are. Um, but yeah, well, they're coming up on the horizon. Grant McCann's gone playing some decent stuff. Colin, they're. They're moving in the right direction. I'll sing it when we're one 0 up against them. Um, Not think we get we do we have them. That is up? dangerous Very though. We win a goal. We have in December. Won defeat, you know. Mind you, I do remember Clark Harris's penalty during COVID at Portman Road. Mm. That 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 cheered me up during COVID. Um, like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, Aidy says it was great to see Matt Holland in the crowd at Bracknell. Talking to Bracknell, let's pull one positive each from that display on Monday night's 3 0 win. Uh, Brand, I'll start with you. One positive we can take out from Bracknell and into the league this weekend defending crosses. Oh, okay. Elaborate a bit more for me. I think, regardless of your opponent, if there are balls getting put in the box and there are big players on both teams, which there were, that's sort of where quality in terms of teams and players sort of comes a little bit more level and Keo and Burgess and even the rest of the lads you know we won every header they um the only time the ball was bouncing around the box their their uh their skipper the waitrose delivery driver um got his foot up to about seven foot tall with uh, his other leg punted on the floor and and put over the bar but um that that was how we were going to this is how you see so many of the lower tiered teams sort of get goals and win against higher opposition team or the, the long throws in the box, the crosses and the set pieces. And although the quality on some of their crosses weren't great, as I said, we won every single header, which we, we haven't said in the previous week or so before this game. So that's the positive. Love that. Uh, we've got a few more. We've got winger. We've got professional from Stephen Parry, uh, KVY from Craig, uh, Matt Stanley, Crunchers trainers said they're positive. 
was 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 that was, said their positive was they got a good wash. They were very muddy those white trainers after the Bracknell. Uh, Neil, your one positive to take away as we head into the weekend. Oh, you're on mute, Neil. You done what I do, mate? Oh, Neil. Neil. Oh, Neil. Neil. Burgess. Burgess. Burgess's performance, yeah, and him coming back. I thought he was outstanding. It was nice yeah. to have him back. Yeah, it's going to make a difference having him back in the squad. Yeah, it is nice to have him back in the squad. It, it yeah. really is going to going to help us. I think. I think we... after conceding four goals at Charlton as well, we need another. Uh, yeah, but... uh, it's Batman. Yeah, yeah, I know you want to get that in, but you save it for the save it for a Monday, Brandon. You're going to be on a Monday soon. I can, I know it, and you can get it. You can, Damn. you can have your overreaction then. It's not, sure. it's not a Wednesday. It's not a Monday today. It's a, it's a Wednesday, um, but. Do you think then, Neil, Charlton, 4-4, four, four, the four goals we considered, do you think Burgess could have played a part in any in stopping them? Because I, from memory, don't think I've, 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 I've many would jump at me as, oh, you know, if, if only Burgess was there. I know, but he's, he's, he's just a big guy and he's more commanding. He's got that presence in the air. I think some of them crosses, I still think if there was one or two crosses, I'm certain there was, that he would have just been there. Hmm. He'd have been there and he'd have won the header. Like they brought Keo on, and I just don't understand what. But hey, well, I, I, I guess that yeah, he could have brought Burgess on. Then instead, yeah. Rob Holmes decent run out for the fringe players. Uh, on that, Colin says Burgess is quality. Um, but we've also got a Richard Keo comment here from Norman saying my positive is we know Keo is not a starter for us. Is that fair, Brandon? I don't think so. No, Were he's you not a start for us. You're right, but <laughs> considering he. He was one of the players. If I didn't say defending cross is my positive, he was going to be the next one because I didn't want to go for an obvious one of, you know, Vincent Young or Humphreys or anything like that. I thought, I think Keo was a one man wrecking crew in, in that defensive box, especially in the first half. I think there was a stage when five crosses or balls went into our box inside a minute. And every single bloody one, it was Richard Keo putting his head, his head on there, his foot on there, and, and getting rid. But yeah, he, he's got a lot of stick, but let's face it, him coming off the bench and us conceding two goals, it wasn't down to just him. Oh, no. We, we, we didn't stop any of the crosses. We didn't um, defend the back post well, which was down to the full backs, you know, tucking in or the defensive Including midfielders. Davis, not, yeah. yeah, not not filling out holes. So, Keogh's getting a lot of a lot of stick. I don't agree with it. I, I don't think he's played particularly poorly any time he's, he's played individually. If you look at his performances in a, in a vacuum, he's Every time we've seen him play, although it might not be in the most glamorous, you know, competition or against the best opponents, he's he's done a job for us. Mm, and it was brilliant yeah. what he'd done after the game, going into the the Bracknell uh, dressing room. Was a nice touch, yeah. I hope Look, I hope they had some signs up in there to say, you know, there's a camera in the dressing room, fellas. Let's uh, let's be aware that we might go on to ITV4 at any time. <laughs> Well, it's always good to know. Colin Plum says Kios is a per person. Craig Kios' first header was was to nearly every ball into our box. Or oh, sorry, Kios' first head uh, was first to head nearly every ball into our box. Uh, Dino loves football. Uh, he says all about opinion. Start of season, people were saying get rid of Burgess. Uh, AD, great praise. Go to Bracknell. How they uh, performed both on and off the field. Right, hold up. Before we go any further, you can join the Talking Town family by becoming the Talking Town fifth standard today. Head to our Ko-Fi site and hit join on YouTube. Get access to greats such as the Discord server where you can talk absolute nonsense day in, day out, 365, 24-7. Um, and eventually I might pop on once in a blue moon. It is once in a blue moon. I must do better at that. I do apologise. Uh, but from 449, from 499, Come and talk in town up. Too busy to... on football manager, aren't you, Gov? You can tell the audience. You can tell them. It'll be fine. It's a secret. But yeah, no. Uh, come and talk in town. Fifth stand up today. And ahead of this weekend at Cheltenham at home. Away Day Beers Company are doing a uh, pre-game Marcus Stewart fundraiser. Where I hear you ask, uh, in the baths, the uh, Civic Drive, 10.30 to 3 p.m., Saturday, the 12th of November. Uh, Awaydaybeers.com for more information. But the three beers on offer are the Bundeslager, the Marcus Brewitt, and the IP1A team. That is uh, the Awayday Beer Company pregame Marcus Stewart fundraiser, the Baths venue, Civic Drives. Get yourself down there for a great morning ahead of a great game because that is what we're talking about next. Cheltenham uh, coming to town. This is your League One table, just in case you've... Uh, 
not looked at it recently, forgotten it, whatever it might be. Uh, we sit in second, 17 points, 37 points. Plymouth are uh, a little bit of a distance opening up now, uh, but we win Saturday, they lose. You know, it closes again, of course, but 41 points there on. Wednesday, two back from us in third. Uh, the opponents for Saturday, Cheltenham, are 19th, which is sixth from bottom, 18 points from 16 games. One win in the last five. Anything but a win is a disappointment, isn't it, Neil? Oh, yes. Yes. Someone needs a whooping. And do you think it's going to be them? Oh, I yeah. hope so. That'd be lovely. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Gavin agrees, Brandon. Do you think this is the game where we finally put a team really to, well, I say finally, but we do put a team to the sword and it is a, a comprehensive Stone Cold Steve Austin arse whooping? We'll see that in my song choice for the, for the jukebox, actually. Um, oh, yeah, wow. I, I, I think we're at home. We're against a team who have just lost to Alva Church um, in mm-hmm. the FA Cup, which was in, in terms of league position and, and you know, divisions. It was a similar, I think it was the same amount of divisions between us and Bracknell as it was Cheltenham and, and Albert Church, and they lost uh, 2 1. So um, I think they're at home. So look, they're, they're going to be coming off of an awful result. Um, they're coming to Portman Road, which we have made rightly a fortress outside of Lincoln. Um, so we, we need to show up, we need to put it right, we need to get three points because. Charlton's the last league game, you know, we've had Bracknell in between and we've had a little bit of time off, but we've got to put that right. We've got to start mm. picking up maybe points that we that we wouldn't have got elsewhere. We have to make up for those two points because they're two points dropped. So whether that be that we beat Plymouth at home and we go to Peterborough later on in the year or whatever you want to say, we Sheffield Wednesday at home, we have to start making up those two points somewhere. So let's make sure that we win on Saturday and not be chasing more points that we've thrown away. Mike D coming through with the words of a uh, sort of warning there, though, Neil. Lincoln weren't in great form when they came to us, and they did a job. We need to kill them and be clinical. Early goal. That would be the teller. If we get an early goal, it, the longer it goes on like it did against Lincoln, it just gets a bit edgy, doesn't it? But I think if we get an early goal... At home good. especially, the first yeah. goal is so important in Ipswich oh, yeah. games. Like yeah. we saw with Lincoln, they didn't really have any interest in attacking. Yeah. They they got a bonus goal from a set piece. It just gives them more incentive to time waste and put every single player behind the ball and have no interest in, in playing football. So yeah. especially at Portland Road, we need to make sure, even if we don't get an early goal, just make sure we get the bloody first one. Yeah, yeah. Hit, hit them quick. Hit them quick hit and hit them hard. hard. Yeah. yeah, exactly how cruncher would it yourself if it was defender versus striker Neil you know get them quick get them hard you don't get a booking no you'd only see the back of that oh look at it look at it <laughs> if only Crudger was here he'd probably agree <laughs> um when you look at safer score though their, their top three weight rated players are a defender a midfielder and a goalkeeper not a great place to be Brandon the the midfielder Liam uh Seracombe played 14 one goal one assist uh, according to BBC Sport their top goal scorers Alfie May with three and two assists um you know, they're a team that don't score a lot of goals, don't create a, a, what from looks like an awful lot of chances. I, I can't say for, for you know for any certainty that that last bit is, is a factual statement, but certainly they've scored 13 goals in League One so far this year. This, you know, if we do our job um, and treat it a little bit like Bracknell in the respect stakes, in the professional stakes, it's got to be a home win, hasn't it? It's got to be. Like, you, I, you know, it's like... Sam Lee yeah, in the town. Yeah, it, it does have to be a win. A little bit like England against Iran to open the World Cup. It has to be a win. A uh, I think win. Alfie Alfie May's actually come off the bench a lot of the time as well. And obviously he's only got three goals in their top goal scorer. So um says it all, there, doesn't it? There was nearly as many goals at the valley as it has been Cheltenham score all season. So um True. Yeah. But yeah. For these sort of teams, we saw we lost to them away last year, didn't we? Early on in the season, when Matt Penny scored a, a decent goal, and then we sort of combusted. I know they haven't got. Was it Toza? Who's Rex? Yeah, I think he was there. Long throws into the box. We've just got to defend the cross better, and I hope that since the Charlton game, we saw some some improvements against Bracknell. I just hope that that's what they've been practicing: stopping the cross. And if the cross is in, just be better prepared. Better organised, head it out. I'm yeah. 
I'm um, really not interested in a one nil Cheltenham here. I'm really not. I'm not interested in a nil nil. I'm not interested in a draw. I'm interested in a convincing win and um no butterflies in the stands, please. Would be nice. Would it surprise you, Neil, to find that actually, you know, scoring goals seems to be their their issue because they've got a better goals against rate than six teams that sit above them in the league table, having considered only twenty goals in, in, in sixteen game um sixteen games, did I say? Yeah, sixteen games. Many. That's that's quite low, isn't it, for a team inside the bottom six? You know, so it's really creativity. They say they're all scoring. Certainly, they're struggling. Yeah, they're not scoring goals, but then they're not conceding as well. You look at a lot of their games; they're one nil, one all, nil one. You know, they're, they're they're very tight, which makes you worry that obviously, if you don't get that goal, people are going to get edgy. Whereas, I think if we do score, we could open up a whole can of, you know, great chances to score goals, but. It's, I hope it isn't one of them edgy ones. That's all I'm hoping. Mm. That's all I'm hoping. Well, this is what we all hope. Uh, we'll go to the jukebox, um, and then I'm going to come back and ask you both for a couple of your 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 selection. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it selection headaches. You've got centre half, centre midfield, centre forward, uh, and a wild card. Might be a wild card to some, might not be a wild card to others, but we'll see. Uh, but first of all, the jukebox. This is where I pit you both against each other um, in an X Factor style showdown. You're both going to plead to the nation why they should select your song for the Talking Town jukebox entry. Uh, Brandon, I will let you go first with this one. What is it? And why should the great Talking Town viewers vote for you in the live poll? Well, this is also my prediction for Saturday. Um, I predict a riot by Kaiser Chiefs. Good song, that. Because I believe that this is going to be the game where we turn up to Portman Road and we absolutely pummel the life out of Cheltenham Town. If it's not already out of them by Alva Church, losing to Alva Church at home. Um, I predict a riot. Bye, guys. Okay. Please. Brandon with I predict a riot. Uh, Neil, over to you. I can't remember who made who done the song. Welcome to the oh. House of Fun. Who was it? Was it Madness? Madness. Yeah, because yeah, that's Madness. what it's going to be Saturday. It's going to be a house of fun. When Ooh. a ball's hitting in there every five minutes. Oh, I like it. House of fun. Because it's going to be the, uh, the ball hitting the net every five minutes. It says, Neil, Brandon, uh, we predict, I predict a riot. Um, I'd go for the Fratellis, you know. A bit of Chelsea dagger, if I'm thinking goals, you know. Back of the old Joe Rule, entertainers. That yeah, used to be, yeah. Very good your your dad's the dancing on Talking Town. <laughs> they're next to you. I think they're actually next to each other on a playlist of mine. So, um, Are they? But uh, I predict a right. That's going to be the score. That's going to be all of um, the Sir Bobby Robson stand running downstairs to celebrate by the advertising board, even though we've scored down the other end. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's for... Limbs. Uh, and still, there'll, there'll be a riot if we don't beat Cheltenham, says Anthony. Still. That too. Many reasons why there's going to be a riot at Portman Road. Yeah. Dino says two good jukebox songs. They certainly are. It's going to be a tight one. Although it's currently 60-40. I'm not going to say which way it's going, but it's 60-40 at the moment. Get those votes in. It is hidden within the live chat. Do look for it. It should be at the top of your live chat. There is a, a poll. Uh, it's got jukebox, Brandon and Neil. Put your vote in. Uh, for who you think should be entering the Talking Town jukebox for Cheltenham. Right, centre-half Saturday. Who's playing at centre-half for you, Brandon? Who are you two? Edmondson and Wolfenden. Yeah, so you're going to go for a rinse and repeat of Charlton? Yeah, I, I think that they're the be best two to play at home as well because they're the best two on the ball. Um, I think people very soon forgot that they're the same two that um, left Derby to scraps. Uh, a, week, a week before that at home as well. So, as I said, the way that I've seen the problem is that we haven't stopped crosses. That's not the centre half's job. Um, and I think okay. that you have to instill some confidence in them and, uh, and give them a go. Okay. Uh, Colin agrees with, um, no, sorry, Colin says Burgess. Stephen agrees with you, Brandon, Edmondson and the Wolf. Neil, are you going to side with Brandon and go with Edmondson, uh, Edmondson and Wolf or are you going to bring in uh, somebody else? I went uh, Burgess and Wolf and them. Okay, talk, talk to me why. Why Burgess and Wolfie? Uh, so I think it's going to change it up. I know Edmondson didn't play the other night, but I just think it's going to change it up. I think Burgess, he was trying him out the other night just to see, you know, whether he's back from 
wearing his face mask and that. And I just think that we could well see him in there. Uh, any, 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 any comment, Neil, on on David there? Burgess and Kie for him? Uh, no. Why? No, no chance. No, because it'll be it'll be one of Wolf and Edmondson or Burgess. Keo Keo's back up. Keo's to the backup. Oh, back yeah, up to the backup. He's back up of a backup. Yeah, but yeah. he's there. He's there, like you know, throwing him on. You know, he's good for injuries, cut runs. Uh, whether we want to throw him on for the last ten minutes to hold it tight. Well, one of them there, isn't but... going to make the squad, are they? Probably. With Vincent no. Young back, and that means only one of them are going to be on the bench. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Keo might not even be on the bench. No, so not not a bad place to be though. When you're leaving, you know, but he's, if he's back up to the backup, then perhaps that isn't the place yeah. you, you'd want him anyway. Uh, Colin says Wolfenden and Burgess, Norman Edmondson, and Wolfie are the best defense to break the lines and start attacks. Going with what you were saying there, Brandon, in the sense of you know they're the best gonna, to yeah, play at home. We're going to have eighty odd percent of the possession. Um, it's it's going to be tough where we're going to have to break down the lines of the defense. Um, you know, I expect that they're going to come and they're going to be, if they, if they got a nil, nil draw Cheltenham, they'll celebrate it like they've won four nil. So, um, we've got to go, although the first job last year, defender, yeah, the first job of a defender I know is to defend, but on this, in this situation, Edmonton and Wolfenden get them in. And, um, I know that it, I think it will be a little bit like Cambridge. I think, um, Edmonton and Wolfenden were nearly playing as centre midfielders. That, that that day and we didn't really have anyone at the back and I, I imagine it would be quite similar Dino's gone for a, a wild card Edmondson and Burgess he wants to give the wolf a break a few times he's been a bit too relaxed for Dino um, Colin Plums congratulations to Wolfenden yes absolutely well done congratulations on a on a on a, on a, a baby girl I think it was from memory was it a baby girl Wolfenden I think sure. it was we'll go with it yeah yeah um, a baby know, human it was a baby. It was a baby. Yes. It was a baby. It was. Stephen Perry, if anyone dropped out for Burgess, it'd be Wolf for the rest of our centre. Our strongest side had Edmondson and Wolf. Neil, if we're going to have possession, as Brandon suggests, we're going to miss Lee Evans, of course. So who's your midfield yeah. too? Uh, I've still stuck with uh, Ball and Morsey. Uh, even though Ball was many people's, probably one of the you know worst performer on, on Monday I, night. Yeah, but I don't. That's against Bracknell Town. It's not. It's not the same as a league game. He when against Derby, he played well. I, th- I, I, I just think he's there. He's the replacement, isn't he, for Evans while he's injured? I don't think he'll play Humphreys. I think Humphreys is he's a squad man. He won't play mm-hmm. instead of Paul. So okay, right, fair he enough. Don't play that many games for QPR and not come in. Last when uh, yeah, it could be right. You know, it could just could, it could be a rusty. He's, he's still knocking off. You know, because yeah, he's he, not played he's, for a while and and whatever. He still hasn't really played a load of games, has he? He I hasn't. But you have he got is. obviously Kamara coming back as well. Scored the goal, uh, but it could be Matt, a bit yeah. early for him to to make a start. He's, he's not match fit yet. Not he match needs. fit for Neil Brandon. Your your two. Ball and Morsey. Yeah, I don't I don't understand the criticism of Ball. Um, people criticising him for not keeping the ball. He um. He's not that sort of midfielder. He was there in case there were lots of balls put in the box and to break up any counter-attacks, which Bracknell didn't have the quality to create. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't really Ball's game. And uh, the, the criticism that was on the show on on uh, Monday night of, of Jackson and Ball, I didn't agree with. Look, we, we've gone to Bracknell. We've done the job in terms of grinding them down, which everyone said the first 15 minutes or so, they're going to be right up for it. We kept possession. Hardly any of them could could run five yards after sixty minutes because of the possession we kept, and you know we made the most of it. And I, yeah, I, I didn't understand any of the criticism that we got. The pitch wasn't nice; you could see that. And I, what did Don Ball do wrong? Oh, I didn't get it. He did. He hardly touched the ball. And whenever it was in the midfield, it was more Seawell Humphreys, which is how it should be. You give the ball to the people who are best with it, and. Um, if Morsi's played a two-yard pass to one of them and then he's been given stick because he didn't do much, I I didn't get it. But, um, yeah, Ball and Morsi, Ball's that insurance in case Cheltenham do, you know, as I said, get a counter-attack. He sort of breaks up play. And if we're chasing the game, bring Humphreys on for him. But uh, okay. to start off with, our attacking play should be enough to win the game without having too much creativity in midfield. 
Uh, Matt Stannard, who was there on Monday night, said that I thought Ball did, did okay. Wind and pitch didn't make passing great. Uh, so you both agreed on that. Who's up front for you this Saturday, Brandon? Ladapo. Okay. Why Ladapo over Jackson or Jackson? Four goals in three games. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Tyrus John Jules, ap- apologies. Um, um, still that, yeah, still, I, was still quite confu- I was quite confused he wasn't in the squad, John Jules. But I suppose with us getting the youngsters on there, someone had to not be on the, in the squad. I know Harness was apparently ill, was he? Um, mm. But yeah, the Dapo goes in for me. He scored a brilliant goal off the bench against Charlton. He scored two goals before that against Port Vale. He scored a good goal off the bench against Portsmouth. I think you get the Dapo up front. You put the players behind him and around him. You put balls into him. And I think he could he could easily get at least a brace on Saturday. If I'm predicting an, a riot, he's going to be front line of that right. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, OK. Uh, up front for you, Neil, you got you know, John Jules. You had a great game against against Charlton. The Ladapo is in great form. Or... I think I picked Ladapo as well. Yeah. He's scoring goals, isn't he? And I know he missed a couple of chances in the week, but at least he's getting there. Be worse if he wasn't getting the chances. He's getting the chances, and he he does, you know, he does miss them. But then most strikers do. If you get four chances in the game, as long as he takes one or well, as long as he takes two, it's fifty percent ratio. And I suppose you've got your two playing behind him, which would be Chaplin and Harness if he's not still ill. I think it. I think it went a little bit under the radar of how important the Dapo was in the build-up to our first goal because I think he took down a nothing ball out of the sky and just touched it down to Edwards who set off Vincent Young and obviously yeah. we know how it how it finished. But he does a lot um, of that, the Dapo. He, he does, does. The donkey and, work yeah, and those so. sort of things sort of do go unnoticed when you're not scoring goals. But now we're scoring goals. You just look at it and you think he's playing the way that we all thought he could from the start of the season. You know, he's he's found his stride. So. Let him go and play, is what I say. Um, would you go with Neil's Chaplin and Harness behind the behind Ladapo, Brandon, or would you go somewhere? You know, t- two else. I don't. I don't think I'd go for Harness. I think if he's been ill, um, he might have missed some time in the training field. From what we've seen in the league, especially when he came on against Charlton, to me, he he, he looked a bit lost. Um, I'd go Chaplin because I think Chaplin at home, you want him to sort of find those little pockets, and I'd probably go with one of the more dynamic options um, of either Edwards or or John, maybe John Jules, as, um, yeah. it, depending on where he is, as the other one. I know that we haven't really started John Jules much as a, as a you know, a 10, but um, maybe Edwards. But um, okay. yeah, that'd be more. A couple of options uh, emerging there, though, you know, John Jules, Edwards. But definitely finest. Chaplin. Definitely, but definitely Chaplin. I think he's got to play. Okay, definitely, Chaplin. Um, the wild card I had in mind was the right back position. Monday show we had the fisherman, uh, JD's probably you know biggest supporter for a long time, saying maybe he needs a rest. Uh, crosses into the box, not being stopped. Goals at back posts, uh, all different manner of things. I was I could say left back, but obviously that just be well wouldn't be a talking point because people would say I was absolutely stupid for suggesting uh, even even dreaming that Leif Davis maybe. Um, isn't on the field for uh, Saturday. So we'll go on the right back instead for the wild card. Is JD still your right back, Neil? Uh, if so, why? And if not, who is it and why? At the moment, he is. Because um, he can obviously slot into a three. If we want to go into a mm-hmm. three centre-halves, he can slot into that area. That's the only reason I would pick him at the moment. But I can see what you're saying. Yeah, Vincent Young played really well the other night. And that's the beauty of having a good squad. The beauty of having a good squad, if someone's having a bad time or somebody gets injured and someone comes in and plays well, they've taken their opportunity. And that's that's the beauty of having a good squad. You've got good yeah. players to come in for good players. And Vincent Young, I know he was injured for a long, long while, but when he first came on the scene, he was bloody excellent. And um, he's now sort of getting back to that sort of... And I'm not going to get carried away because it was Bracknell the other night, but... Do it. I, I like him. I think he's a great player. And I thought he was excellent the other night. And it, either way, but I think Danassian at the moment because they can go into a back three if they have to. Okay. 10 euros from David. Thank you very much, David. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much for 
that kind super chat. Uh, JD starts for for Stephen. Uh, Norman Jackson to play as Harness is out of form. Uh, it's also interesting to see the fisherman reaction to, to him playing. Uh, Michael Brown is here saying, how the hell people saying Jackson should start beyond me? He did nothing against Brandon. It's almost like you write the words Jackson Brilliant. to start. Name and him got, and he will appear. He's got an algorithm. <laughs> he he must not from, be named. It he rings really he's in his tent while he's fishing and he goes, someone somewhere has said that Jackson must be started. Quick. To the, to the laptop. <laughs> um, absolutely love it. Love you, Mike. Really do. Uh, KVY for Norman to play as we need more attacking fullback. Uh, is Norman right there, Brandon, or is it JD for you? Yeah, KVY for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I was a little bit scared to say that when I saw Michael was in the in the comments. Um, no, yeah, K, KVY for me. Um, I think I said I said a similar thing after the Cambridge game about Edwards. I think when a player has that sort of game. You have to play the hot hand. It's a bit similar to me playing the Dapo on Saturday as well. Kane Vincent Young was up and down that touchline, you know, all game. Absolutely quality. Every time he touched the ball, he looked like he was going to do something. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd have, I think him and Burns on that right side could be absolutely terrifying. Hmm. How, so, um, and, and obviously, your answer to, to Neil there about the, the, the back three, which is a very good and valid point. You know, JD is that hybrid where he can play right back, right wing back, centre back, any one of the three, all three at the same sort of time, the same sort of space of 10 minutes. What do you say to Neil there? That, that, that's what Danashian brings, that flexibility. If, you're, if, if we're at the point when we need an extra defender, then I can only imagine that means that we're leading by one goal with 10 minutes to go because for the rest of the game, I'd like to see us attacking even if we are one, one goal up. So that's sort of the way that I'm viewing it. Um, I also have all, always said that I see our team set up more as a four, back four. Um, and although you've got Don Ball in centre midfield who can also go to the back. So I think at any point, if you want to do that, you can either bring Janoy off the bench in the second half or you can just slot Don Ball a bit deeper and, and fill the gap in the defence or add to the add to the centre half. So I, I don't see it as a problem if if we miss out on the possibility that Genoi could fill in at centre half. I think unless they're bombarding our box and we're under pressure, I think as I said at that point, I think we would have substitute that we can make to bring him on anyway. Um, I don't see it being a problem. Okay, love it. Uh, coming to the end of the show. Uh, no link tonight. Do apologise, guys. Uh, I had a chest infection, still getting over it, but my two-year-old's got uh, a little touch of tonsillitis, so we've had sleep the nights, and oh. yes, Lovely. yes, he's not been well at all. He's a, Can't you know, believe you've um, made your two-year-old sick, Martin. <laughs> Can't believe you've done that. <laughs> don't give, don't give, don't give me the guilt, man. You don't um, give him kisses when you're not feeling well, Martin. <laughs> I know, I know, but he has had it, had it had it bad so no link tonight just to make sure we uh finish around if not the hour uh the jukebox results before we come to the score prediction brandon versus neil i'm afraid to say well, i'm not afraid to say i'm pleased to say neil has taken it with 50 oh it's a joke of the vote it's, yeah. it's madness going into Come the on. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Willemore. I'm not even going to um, go to the game Saturday anymore. <laughs> Let's go with a personal stereo and play I Predict a Riot on loud. Um, <laughs> it'll be louder than the Tannoy in most stands anyway. Yeah. And uh, But yeah, Neil, congratulations. 56% of the live uh, viewing audience went with yourself. You are through to next week's round. Shows I mean, the age of our audience, that does. That's what that does. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, Brandon, because you, you know, just because Kaiser Chiefs are, twice you know, in a row, I haven't done ready to, ready to go, didn't even get in there last time to a song I've never bloody heard of. I've run it, I've won it twice in a row now. Oh, Neil is undefeated on the jukebox, right? Score predictions, then, as Lee says, don't forget to hit that like button. Do not forget, we are live at Sir Ralph pregame show on Saturday. Don't forget, we have uh, the Away Day Beers Company pregame. Marcus Stewart fundraiser at the Bath's Venue Civic Drive, 10.30 to 3. Uh, the IP1, 18, 4.2% session pow. A Marcus Brewett, 5.2% West Country IPA. And a Bundeslager, a 4.6% German lager, which is very nice. Very, very, very nice. I have to have to say that. I have had that several <coughs> times. Um Stick a few noughts on there. I do like that one. It is my favourite, I think, by far. Uh, Brandon, you're Rob's, says Michael. Uh, Stephen, yeah, also exactly. voted for Kaiser Chiefs. I, I've never seen Michael agree with me. This is a once-in-a-lifetime. 
chance for me. And it doesn't count. Actually, yeah, I can't. Nobody actually. cares. It's look, over. Look, someone's even put put them both in. I think you should put them no, both in. No chance. Don't, I predict to write. Don't O'Leary don't get on the X Factor, does he? Don't they both please, have the same please message. put us both in. Please. Both songs <laughs> have the exact same message that Ipswich are going to absolutely pound Cheltenham on the weekend. Is this the equivalent of when they go to the judges at the end? Please, Louis. Louis, please. Please, Louis, please. Please, <laughs> Maybe. please. Please, Maybe. please, Louis, Maybe. please. Like, just get on with it. Um, Neil's just sitting back laughing. Crack out. He's got a beer on a go now. Look. He's, he's a Stick madness on, Neil. Stick madness <laughs> on. Go on. You didn't know who they were, did you? Stick them on. <laughs> I've got my phone. Yeah. I could do. There we go. Don't. Copy, copyright. Uh, mm, Michael right. Mastanard, 5-1. Connor Plum, 3-0. Rob Smith, 2-0. AD Croucher, 3-1. Dino, 2-1. Uh, both should go in, to be fair, says Rob and Stephen Parry. 4-0, says Colin. Brandon, what is yours? 5-0. 5-0. The Dapo, 2. Chaplin, 1. Morsi, 1. And Edwards won. Okay. I like it. I like it. Neil, your score. Michael thinks the votes are rigged. I agree, Michael. <laughs> uh, can't rig a YouTube Get poll. over yourself. Absolutely, um, Neil. Uh, I don't think we'll concede. I'm going 4 0. 4 0, 5 0, 4 0. Oh, any time it's all been comp- nil, yeah? No, 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 no. I, I, just get, oh, I just get like a big alarm bells ringing every time the chat is positive, is the contributors George. are positive, because that. it's normally followed by an absolute. Shit show. Um, you know, I've seen here, AFC Wimbledon undercook, Wimp Northampton undercook, had one this year. Lincoln, I said on the platform myself, uh, Sandy Lincoln, uh, and they beat us 1 0. So, uh, you know, alarm bells are a ringing, but I think we should have a, enough about us. Um, but I'll leave it up to you. So that's 4 0 from Neil, 5 0 from Brandon. This has been Talking Town. Don't forget Trim Lee's match day packets. Go and give it a check. Go and give it a like, subscribe. Hit the like button on this video. Um, we're back again on Friday at 8 30 for the f- big weekend kickoff with Away Day Beers. Myself, Matt, and Rich. Go on, Neil. You got something? If the- anyone sees me Saturday, I'm with my under 14 youth team. We're on a an out day at Ipswich. There'll be 30 of us. 14. It'll be madness. <laughs> It'll be madness. There'll be 14 adults and 16 kids, and they're all coming to watch it sweet Saturday. And the fun house. Saturday. Yeah. We'll see you. We'll, we'll see you Friday. You make me smile when I think of you. If I